Good afternoon, everyone. Today is Saturday of the third week of Easter. Happy Easter, everybody. Thanks for joining me in this discussion on the church and the liturgy. I love talking about this. I hope you enjoy it as well. So I want to talk to you about the church once again, because I think we need a good foundation of the understanding of the church, especially that moment when Jesus said to Peter at Caesarea Philippi, you are now known as Peter. And Peter means rock, right? To you, I entrust the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you declare bound on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you declare loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. I think the whole beautiful uh, leadership of the church is seen right there at Caesarea Philippi as Christ bestows the authority of leadership for his church to Peter and Peter's successors, the popes. What does the word pope mean? Papa, Father, Father Peter. Today we have Father Francis. So we say Pope Francis, it really means Father Francis, Papa. And how beautiful this father imagery really is. A father who needs to feed his children and to tend to their needs. And that's what the Holy Father, the Pope, is called to do by Christ. If you love me, Peter, then feed my sheep, tend my lambs. Make sure that you're feeding them with word and sacrament. Make sense? Make sure that you're tending them with the truth, the truth of the gospel, the truth in the manner of life in which they should live. It's not up to us individually to say, well, I think that, that's fine. Another, another Catholic says, well, yeah, I'm going to do it this way. Another Catholic says, oh, I don't believe that. You're not Catholic. You're not Catholic. You're fracturing already now what Christ has established. To you, Peter, I entrust the keys of the kingdom. To you, Peter, whatever you declare loosed on earth, whatever you declare bound on earth, in other words, this binding and loosing, this setting affirmative, like this is what we are called to do and believe, and loosing, those, those moments in which the Holy Father says, no, no, this is not right. This, this whole act of authority, of leadership, it's of a servant leadership model. I have not come to be served, but to serve. And that's the whole understanding of the servant leadership model that Jesus bestows upon Peter and his successors. So the church is that body that has to care for all of its members. Boy, when I have a toothache, my whole body hurts. When I have a headache, even my toes hurt me. So we know that it affects every member. We have to be very conscious of that, that we belong together. We're a family. We are a family and we have to care for one another. And Peter and his successor has that responsibility to bring this unity of members together and hold it together with his bishops in union with him. This is the command of Christ. So to say, I believe this, or I want this, or, or I don't, I don't do that. I don't, or I, no, I don't do that. I, I, what is that all about? I, I know you hear your family members say that. I know you hear other people say that they're not really being faithful to their Catholic faith. They're not really being faithful to the one church. There's, no, there's not more than one church. Christ did not found 50,000 churches and said, pick your own to suit your own lifestyle. He did not say that. Only one. 
We have to understand that. And we have to come to an, a, a, a deep awareness and a deep understanding of that fact, of that truth. Okay? So, the, the parish church, I want to talk to you a little bit. Let's dive into the parish church. It's not just a structure. It's just not a building, right? It has a deep theological meaning. Do you know that not only is the church called the house of God? Do you ever hear that? Oh, you, you know, this is the house of God. Why do you say that? Because the Blessed Sacrament is living in that building. It's the house of God. It is God's presence. His presence. Could you imagine that? His presence, his living presence is in the tabernacle. Do you ever see the light next to the tabernacle? To tell you that he's alive in there. He's alive. Do you ever see the lights around the altar? He's alive. He's alive. He is the light of the world. All who follow him will never walk in darkness. So the church is the house of God. And beautiful, it is the place in which the church gathers. <laughs> Isn't that funny? I just said the church is the house of God. And yet at the same time, I said, the reason why the, the term church has its name is because that's where the church gathers for prayer. Because you're the church, aren't you? And I'm the church. And this person's the church. And this person is the church. You know, the many members all come together. The reason why we call it a church is because of those who are in it. Baptized, confirmed, and nourished by Christ. So <clears throat> it is also to give us an understanding of the heavenly Jerusalem. Did you ever hear of that? The heavenly Jerusalem. The eternal banquet. It should be a foretaste of the kingdom. Everything that is within the church, the tabernacle, the very throne of God, the altar the very place in which Christ is sacrificed, broken, and given. The people that are gathered have been redeemed by the very blood of Jesus, dripping from his hands, his side, and his feet. The people of God redeemed nourished, sanctified by his precious body and blood. Yes, the stained glass windows help us to understand a reality that is divine. From this very sun, the light that shines on them, they bring about a beautiful color and a manifestation of a reality of the divine. The statues are brothers and sisters who are one with God in heaven, who have reheard the same gospel and received the same sacraments you and I have, one with God. All of these things in the church, sacramentals, help us to pierce into the very sacrament so we are nourished and receive salvation from it. Remember I told you that the, the church is a sacrament. The church is a sacrament. It is an outward sign <laughs> instituted by Christ to give grace. So the church is a sacrament. But what we understand the church to be, 
both human and divine. So the church, yes, this, this structure is the church. And everything that it has and everything it is and everything that is placed within It's part of both human and the divine element, which is Christ. Because Christ is both human and divine, is he not? Well, there you have it. There you have it. Let's talk about anything in the church. The humanity of the church and its divinity. It's always both then, never, never either or. I've told you that a thousand and one time, right? So when we look at the church and we see all of these things, they help us understand of a deeper reality, a fundamental truth that is very much divine or transcendent. These things are part of matter, the earthly element, but they convey a fundamental divine truth, just like the miracles. The miracles, Jesus healing a physical problem, but really touching the soul for a spiritual healing. Well, that's a lot to talk about. Please, stay with me. Write down your notes. And if you have any questions, write them to Susan. Have a nice day, everybody.